How do you know someone has a sexually transmitted infection? Simple answer, most of the time you don't. In this video, I am going to explain to you why this is and what you can do to prevent getting infected yourself. My name is Stefan Buntrock and I'm a board certified urologist and sexologist. If you watch Euro channel on a regular basis, you know that I was busy last week teaching medical students at the Kassel School of Medicine about sexually transmitted infections. This is a good opportunity to teach you guys some of the stuff because it may come in useful for you too. First of all, I know the YouTube algorithm is showing all of my new content to subscribers age 65 and older in the first place. Now you may argue that STI, sexually transmitted infections, that is, primarily affect young people, which is true. So should this video make it into the younger age groups, please keep watching because this also concerns you. But when it comes to STI, we in the medical community have a problem because we automatically assume that people 50 years and above don't have sex anymore. It goes without saying that this is not true, but we fail to diagnose STIs in the older age groups in timely fashion. We are missing too many HIV infections, for example. Diagnosing HIV late is associated with unfavorable outcomes. So which diseases are we talking about? Depending on the individual risk profile, chlamydia, gonorrhea, mycoplasma, Herpes and, in some parts of the world, also trichomonas, make up the majority of the infections. Syphilis is on the rise big time within certain areas and communities. HIV is a big problem in some areas of the world and so on. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention recently came out with a press release with quite alarming figures. In 2018, one in five Americans had a sexually transmitted disease at any given time. Just think about it. You know more than five people, right? How many people do you meet on the street when you go out? One in five. So which behavior will increase your personal risk? Having casual sex with shifting partners, not using condoms, having sex with people from geographic areas of the world which have a high prevalence for a given disease having sex while using recreational drugs because this will alter your perception of risk and will prolong the exposure to risky behavior, thus increasing overall risk. Using recreational drugs, especially those which have to be injected, poses a higher risk. Now, here's a very important point. You don't see whether a person has an STI or not. Even if you think you know that person, there is no guarantee that she or he doesn't have an STI and your potential partner might even be unaware of that infection because very often STIs remain asymptomatic for quite a while. It is a different story if you live in a long-term relationship and have sex exclusively with that partner. We call those the sexually dead by the way because they don't contribute to spreading STIs. Sometimes however there are visible signs of STIs. You should say no to people with warts in their genital region, penis and vagina, because these are signs of a potential infection with HPV. Any kind of wounds in the genital area should raise your suspicion. If there is a rash on the body, this might also be a sign. Any kind of discharge is suspicious, especially when it has a foul smell to it. So instead of taking that risk, it might be wiser to say no and let it sort out medically first because delusion is short, remorse is long, as it says in one of the most famous German poems by Friedrich Schiller. The risk you are taking can be put into numbers. For example, one unprotected heterosexual encounter will go along with a 4.5% risk to acquire chlamydia if the other person is infected. With mycoplasma, the risk is as high as 20.6 to 66.7%. In syphilis, it is 51 to 64% and gonorrhea spreads from man to woman with a likelihood of 60 to 90% during just one unprotected encounter. Having one infection even increases the risk for other infections. Syphilis and HIV is a toxic combination because 
if you catch syphilis, your risks of also catching HIV increase quite dramatically. Please remember that sex not only is restricted to vaginal sex, oral sex is also sex and may transfer STIs. For example, according to the CDC, 70% of the oral cancers in the United States are caused by the human papillomavirus, HPV. Gonorrhea can easily be transferred by deep kissing. The same goes for anal sex. The underlying cause of proctitis may be gonorrhea, chlamydia, syphilis. Anal sex goes along with an elevated risk of HIV, especially in men who have sex with men. So why the big fuss about something that remains asymptomatic in many cases? Because STIs often cause severe damage if left untreated. Very often fertility is threatened, but also birth defects or transmission during birth may be seen with nasty consequences for the newborn, like in syphilis or herpes, for example. Some diseases may even lead to death if not diagnosed and treated early. So stay safe, don't ignore STIs because they are out there and use condoms. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. <laughs>